Hello, and thank you for joining us today in our study of the Psalms. Today we are in Psalm 10, and as we come into the 10th Psalm, you have David who is going to be writing about how God deals with the wicked, but also how the wicked seek to deal with or seek to talk about God. And you're going to have the clash of the mentalities in, in one sense, which is why I've titled this chapter, God versus the Wicked. And so you have on the one side at the beginning, how the wicked treat others, how they act toward God and so on and so forth. And then at the end of the chapter, you have God's response. So let's look at Psalm 10. Beginning in verse 1, we read, Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? The wicked in his pride persecutes the poor. Let them be caught in the plots which they have devised. For the wicked boasts of his heart's desire. He blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. His ways are always prospering. Your judgments are far above, out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. He sits in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places, he murders the innocent. His eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lies in wait to catch the poor. He catches the poor when he draws him into his net. So he crouches. He lies low, that the helpless may fall by his strength. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see. Arise, O Lord. O God, lift up your head. Do not forget the humble. Why do the wicked renounce God? He has said in his heart, You will not require an account. But you have seen, for you observe trouble and grief to repay it by your hand. The helpless commits himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness until you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations have perished out of his land. Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear to hear, to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. Here in Psalm 10, you have this contrast between the mindset of the wicked and the reactions of God. Now, it's going to begin with this question about why do you stand afar off? In other words, why don't you intervene immediately is the idea. There's not necessarily an answer to this other than the fact that God will deal with the problems in his own time. But let's look at a couple of the things that we need to pull from Psalm 10. In the first place, at the very beginning of our text, you have the discussion of the boasting and the pride of the wicked. You know, the wicked aren't going about with, with shame or acting in such a way that they are scared or afraid of God. In fact, they are ones that are very much boastful about all that they have and all that they do. And their pride is puffed up, believing that nothing will ever happen to them, that God will not ever do anything to them because he hasn't done anything to them yet. The wicked in his pride, the psalmist says, persecutes the poor. The wicked boasts of his heart's desire. The wicked in his proud countenance does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. One of the things that promotes the, the mentality of wickedness is the fact that God is nowhere to be found. There is no fear of God. There is no concern for what is right or what is wrong. It is all about personal affirmation and what it is that person can get away with as they see it. They are not interested in doing what is right. 
he is always worried about one thing, and that is prospering for himself. And so you have the wicked who are boastful about all that they've done. They are proud about who they are and what they do, even though what they do directly goes against the word of God. Because you see, they have the mindset in their hearts that is talked about in verse 11, and that mindset is God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see. In other words, I can do whatever I want to. God's not going to do anything to stop me. God doesn't care. God's not paying attention. If there is a God, he's certainly not going to come after me because he hasn't come after me yet. How many people go through this life believing that if God really cared about what they were doing, he would have stopped them by now? And yet that's not always the way God works. And that's not the way that God is going to deal with every situation. And so you have this mentality that God's not paying attention. Because if God had a problem with what we were doing, we wouldn't have been successful in it. I've heard so many times over the years, people who will argue for the acceptable nature of their action from the fact that nothing has ever happened to them while they've been doing it. And that if God was displeased with it, he would have stopped them by now. And yet Psalm 10 illustrates that that's not necessarily the case, even for people who are doing extremely wicked things. And yet, you have the sentiment made at the end of the chapter, beginning in verse number 12, that God will respond in time. That there is coming a time when, as verse 14 puts it, you have seen and you observe the trouble and grief to repay it by your hand. You see, an individual may go through their entire life being able to, as it were, get away with their deeds that they have done, get away with all of the ways that they've mistreated people, that they've walked on the word of God, that they have done wickedly in their lives. But see, whether God repays it in this life or not, is not the final area in which God can influence things. For God has the ability to respond eternally and to be respond to things beyond this life. And so it is that the psalmist says at the end, to, you will prepare their heart, you will cause your ear to hear, to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may oppress no more. It will not go on forever. And even if an individual spends their entire life acting in these wicked ways and doing these wicked things, they still aren't going to get away with it because ultimately they will have to stand before God and they will lose. These are some of the things that I have seen in Psalm 10. I hope that they are beneficial to you. There are certainly a lot more things and a lot more details of the actions of the wicked and the way that God responds that we could talk about out of this psalm today, but this is where we're going to break our study off. Thank you so much for joining us today. Tomorrow we will come back and we will look at Psalm 11. I hope that you'll join us then. But until then, have a great day.